runs, 2,000 RBIs, and uh, got his 3,000th hit the other day. And I believe they both did it on a home run, the 3,000th hit. Yes. Yeah. They both did it on wow. a home run. Crazy. You cannot yeah, tell me amazing. that A-Rod's not juicy. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's pretty obvious now. It is impossible. Right. How old is he? 38? Yeah. Or something? He's not 39. 39? He's old. All of a sudden, he sits out for a year, and he's fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that how it goes? Like, the older you get, like, the better you get? <laughs> yeah, when you're taking steroids. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sperry Bonds. Yeah. yeah. This is not golf, <laughs> yeah. though it's close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not Tiger, uh, apparently, Tiger Woods is not taking oh steroids. Oh, my God. That's true. Yeah. He needs to. Yes, he, he does. He takes steroids and fucks less. Or injects a horse, laid. please. Yeah. Uh, Max Scherzer was a pitch away from a perfect game today. Okay. <laughs> and he blew it. Was yesterday. It, yesterday. But he blew it himself. <laughs> by hitting the guy in the elbow. Now, here's the thing. Oh. Two have outs you guys, already. Have you guys <laughs> seen, the, uh, have seen the the replay of no. this? No. Nope. The guy stuck his elbow out. What a oh. dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's getting hit for real the next I time mean, out. I mean, this wasn't like a fucking elbow in the face. But he just kind of, I should find the video and post it for you guys. It just kind of went down just a oh, little no, bit. A he certainly did not dodge the Didn't ball. Didn't try to move out of Where's the Where's a South, South Carolina gunman when you need him uh, right now? How dare you? He's Sorry. in jail. Oh Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. You should let him out. And my favorite baseball story from last week is the Dodgers beat the Rangers with a bock off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so oh, good. That was great. I love it. I was, I was watching the replay. In fact, uh, the guy I worked with, Trevor, showed me the video. And at first on my phone, I could not see... The shoulder flinch or anything. I was like, what are you talking about with Bach? And then uh, pulled it up on a, it's, on a big monitor. You could just, just a fucking flinch. Yep. And wow. I love how the referees get that right. Umpires, the umpires yeah. get that right. Yeah. But not and, a home run call. Right. And then, of course, it was a box, so every runner advances a base. Jock was on third. <laughs> home plate. That's home not plate. fair. What if you like Smoke Angel dust? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a twitch. He's tweaking. Yeah, He's tweaking. He's got those smoky twitches. I got Tourette's. <laughs> it's a bock off, everybody. It's a bock I love off. that this is the ultimate symbol of baseball being a game of, of errors and basically negative game in, in game uh, playing because mm. you get out more often than you're going to get a hit and you're more errors happen in a game than actual good things happen you spent you can spend the whole game like bad shit happening mm-hmm. and then one run all of a sudden it becomes a good game but the fact is baseball is a game of errors and and bad hitting yeah. and it's that's why i hate baseball that's <laughs> wow. the reason i hate baseball because wow. it's slow as shit now i'm depressed you should be <laughs> yeah you really should be um, anyways, I think the hashtag Bakoff coming from the chat room in there. So thank you. Um, oh, and then finally for base, one last story. Melissa Mayo, she's 16. She's from France. 16, Mike. Keep it down. Oh, okay. I, well, won't, uh, I won't Google her for it's two It's a years. girl. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's a girl. So. <laughs> he almost typed nude in the, in the <laughs> box. <laughs> he was in the middle. <laughs> yeah. She's not that good looking anyways. Uh, uh, she's a shortstop, and she could potentially sign with an MLB team very shortly. Um, she's now eligible to sign. And they're they're looking at her. So. Someone will for publicity reasons. Probably, probably stupid. Yes. And again, uh, not many shortstops come out of col- out of uh, the majors anymore, or, or into France. the majors anymore. Yeah, like great or yeah, or friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. I didn't even know France even had a baseball team Was or sports. Basketball. She's sixteen year old French girl. Is she on the major leagues over there? <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, I have no joke for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they play baseball in France. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Never thought about only that. the ladies. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Why? Is it a lady sport? I'm just saying. Okay. So, I've never heard of a male a French of, uh, baseball player. The douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, cleaning that one the up. The douchebags yeah. versus the croissants. Yeah. <laughs> Cut slow for a second. Uh, I think it's time for a break because of that slowness. But we're going to come back. <laughs> we have uh, a, a super cool guest, Jeff Bearden, a.k.a. Giant Warder, Warrior, a.k.a. Tiger Steel. He'll be joining us to talk about uh, his days as a seven-foot pro wrestler. Damn. Talk about the largest athlete in the world. Big Slow's got nothing. <laughs> and he's also a motivational speaker now, so that should be uh, should be fun. Anyways, you can get us on thecharitystrike.com, facebook.com slash thecharitystrike, at the charity strike on the old twat box, no E at the end, 805-419-3679, number to call, sex, and text. Uh, the Cherry Strike on Instagram, and uh, send us your slutty pictures so we can like them during the game. Yeah. Uh, so on that note, we'll be right back, everybody. Be back, big dude. Thank you. 
The Sci-Fi Super Friends Podcast, a weekly show that reviews and rates science fiction, fantasy, and horror films. You can find us at sci-fi superfriends.com and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher Smart Radio. Join us on our never-ending quest for glory. Sci-Fi Superfriends.com. Alright, I guess I should get this going. Boom. You're listening to the charity strike. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome back in, everybody. Still the Charity Strike. Still Great Rebound Drones with me, Trigger Mike. Midlife Crisis. We're back, bitches. And like a pandemic. That's right. <laughs> the quickest intro <laughs> in the intro business. Uh, as promised, and even though Skype tried to derail us, we are being joined by the one and only Giant Warrior, a.k.a. Tiger Steel, or as we know him these days, Jeff Beard. And Jeff, how's it going? Good. Thanks for joining us tonight. I know it's uh, probably oh, late for you. Yeah. Um, Jeff is now uh, a motivational speaker. He talks to youth about getting back on their feet, saying up to bullying, battling depression, uh, known as the get back on your feet guy. But uh, you may also know him as the big seven-foot wrestler that used to kick people's asses. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I, you know, I look... It's a lot easier to run my mouth and get my head, get hit in the head with a chair. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to remember, at least. <laughs> Uh, exactly, man. I, I looked you up on YouTube. We we're all watching some old YouTube matches and uh, some good stuff. I mean, you were you were a, a true giant, not uh, just build at seven foot, but you were a big dude. Yeah, I was a legit seven foot. Like uh, I was a half inch over seven. Jeez, wow, that's awesome. You know, it was always funny when I would run into some of the guys that were supposed to be seven foot. <laughs> it's like, but you're two or three inches shorter than I am. <laughs> Get those platforms out. Yeah, the only one that was really and stuff as tall as I was was Andre. Oh, oh yeah. so Andre I, in, was in huge. Big show, in Big Show when I met Paul and stuff, he was right at my height as well. Okay. Did you ever get to wrestle with Andre? Yeah, I wrestled Andre in Japan. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Is that early in the career or later in his career? Toward the end, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, that's when he made the run in Japan after the WWE had him lose to Hogan. He made like a run in Japan, I think. Right. This would have been like 90, 90, I guess. Yeah. Please tell me you went out uh, partying with that guy. No. Oh. God, no. <laughs> Can't hang out Nobody could hang with that guy. Yeah. Jeez, we, got, we had a layover in uh, Tokyo and stuff when we were flying up to Sapporo for about 30, you know, like a little over, a little less than an hour. And he did like ten double camparis and soda in like thirty minutes. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and it was just unbelievable so to watch that guy drink. That's a that's a ticket event in itself. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, so Jeff, how did you how did you get started in the business? Who trained you? How did you break in? Um, I'm from Amarillo, Texas originally. So I grew up around With the, the funks funk then, rock, and they were the ones that got me into wrestling. Nice. I mean, that's that's legendary family down there. Oh, yeah. You know, I went to school with all of Dory Funk Jr.'s kids, so we were mm. all the same. So I had known, you know, the Funk since I was probably 13 or so. And, and I would get into wrestling and stuff. I uh, went to, to Europe to play basketball and had contract problems and came home. And I was just burned out on playing basketball. And called Terry and told him that I wanted to start wrestling. And Terry sent me out to Dory in North Carolina, and I trained with him and Murdoch. Wow! If you don't mind me asking, uh, what what around what year was this? Um, eighty seven. Okay. And did you so did you come in through Texas or were you in the Carolinas? No, I was in the Carolinas. I actually my first matches were actually for Crockett. Oh, nice! So like the last days of Crockett before his WCW then. Right. Yeah. Did you ever? Yeah, they had just buy. Uh, they were just in the process of buying the old uh, Florida and Mid South. That's awesome. that's like the good days of like as the good days of wrestling were ending. Waiting, yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, it was really amazing and stuff to be around. You know that much talent. Yeah, because so at that time we had Rock and Roll and Midnight and the Four Horsemen and Dusty and you know so there was so much talent there. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking, that 
Dusty definitely. Did, did, did you get to know Dusty a lot? Knowing that obviously he just Dusty passed, was he just my died. Booker, yeah, yeah, he amazing Booker too. He's legendary for his stuff in the eighties. Yeah, I never really, you know, he never really did much with me, but you know, I just kind of worked the C cards when I was first breaking in. That makes sense. Um, you know, so I fun trips, you know, like Harrisonburg, West Virginia from Charlotte and, uh, you know, making Georgia and places like that. The ones that were the, you know, eight, nine, 10 hour trips. So those were the, those are the ones I got booked on. Did you ride with any, did you ride with any of the big time guys or were you riding with some of the guys on your level at that time? No, no. I was always riding with, uh, Murdoch and Ooh. Ivan Koloff and Jimmy Valiant and, those had to be interesting rides. Bob Jaggers. Were there? Are, do you have like one story that sticks out in your mind that the fans would love to hear from rides with those guys? That that's that's some legendary wrestling. That's legendary. Right oh, you know, just it was just a history lesson. You know, whenever you you were in a car with you know, because at that time and stuff, Murdoch was a heel. Yeah. So he was he was tagging with Koloff. Okay. So I mean, to ride with those two to shows and stuff was just a history lesson. Were you a heel also? Um, time? not really. I I was working babyface. I think pretty well my first few years in the business, I worked as a babyface. And they allowed you guys to ride together. Well, at that time, I didn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> You're flying under the radar, so to say. Yeah, I wasn't really anything. I wasn't on television or anything, so I didn't really count. That makes sense. Yeah, some of the matches I saw on YouTube, it looked like you're working heel. I mean, they didn't have any promos or anything, but uh, I guess it would have depended the matches you watched. Yeah, I know one was an outdoor event. That's the thing with YouTube. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what it was. If it was the ones with like Barbarian, oh yeah, I saw that. Abdullah and Kamala, all those and stuff. I was working babyface in Puerto Rico. Okay. I was probably one of the few Americans that they brought in as a baby face that they never turned heel. Interesting. And and was it as crazy in Puerto Rico as they say it is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fans rushing the ring and all that stuff? It could be. So it wasn't so bad um, in the baby face side of things and stuff. So I didn't catch all the stuff, you know, going back into working on the baseball fields and going back into the dugout. You know, I didn't catch a lot of the things being thrown at me. Yeah. You know, I had once I started working heel. You know, I started having a lot more problems. You know, I got I've been stabbed five times by spectators. Oh, jeez! So uh, the first time was in Mexico City, um, in, in Cuatro Caminos when I was working a, a world title match with Connect, and uh, we had a very hot finish to where they actually raised my hand and then. The referee reversed the decision. Well, people went nuts as soon as they raised my hand on the thing. No. And Owen Hart was my second. <laughs> so, you know, Owen and I stuff were trying to, you know, beat it out to the dressing room. And I mean, it was a long way back there, but it was all uphill on metal steps and it was in a bullfighting arena. Oh, so, you know, by the time the people had been throwing beer and everything else and spilled cokes and all the dirt that was tracked up and down those steps, those steps were really slick. And I don't know if you remember the old Mexican pesos. I mean, they were big and heavy and worth nothing. Daniel? <laughs> and they started throwing those pesos. Jeez. So Owen and I had grabbed chairs to put up over our face to protect ourselves as we were going up <laughs> the stairs. Oh, man. And, it, it didn't cover much of your body, though, right? Oh, no, it just covering my face because I'd worked in Mexico before. So I knew as if, you know, fans would have a tendency, as if, especially on something hot, they'd piss in a cup and throw it in your face as if you're trying to go oh. under the oh. uh, under the balconies. That's dirty. <laughs> yeah. So I knew as stuff to keep my face covered. But as I did, so if somebody caught me going through the crowd and stuff and just sliced me so forward and back. And so oh. I got two incisions. Where they got me, I took sixty stitches. Oh my god! And I would not want to be stabbed in Mexico of all places. Oh sounds... no! But it was really a, a scary thing. Jeez. So, so in Mexico, the real physicality starts after the match. If Sometimes. you're here, 
Yeah, sometimes it could stuff in there. I worked with um, Kokina quite a bit, which was Yokozuna. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I knew that's the name. And so Rod- Rodney and I and stuff were tagging together for, for a long time down there. And so we had some fun nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard about Yokozuna. 